All right, everyone, welcome back to The Family Astrologer. This is Katherine Urban, and today I have a very special guest. This is Carmen Mojica. Welcome, Carmen, to the program. You're my very first guest, and it's such an honor to have you. I'm excited to talk to you. I, like I've been waiting for this for a while. Yay! Awesome. So, Carmen, I want to I want to share um some of your background and your skill set with the audience. But first, I kind of want to just share how we know each other. We you and I we go way back. We met what? Like 15 years ago now. We actually met cuz we're talking about astrology um when Pluto moved into, into Capricorn in yeah. 2008. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was right around <laughs> that time. And uh, we met, in, we were working together. We were doing a little art modeling together. Mm-hmm. And we, we sure got were. we got paired on um, like a single like painting. So we got to like sit for a painting together. Mm-hmm. That was so cool. Um. So, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Because when we met, you were very passionate about midwifery. And I looked at your birth chart and I saw all those Cancerian placements and I knew. I just knew it was going to happen for you. Can you tell us about your journey so far, your credentials? Oh, MG, my credentials, the letters behind my name. So thank you for introducing me. I'm smiling because I remember that time in our life very fondly um because in many ways both of us were embarked on the careers that we now are currently occupying in the public space and you know we were all we were both going through our own trials and tribulations during that time but we were you and I what I remember were very clear about the direction that we were going and you were already into astrology but you had been like learning how to read more and like taking it more seriously and I was already embarking on being um being interested in reproductive health so that's why I'm smiling as you're talking because I'm like wow like it's been 15 years an entire generation and we're right at the tail end of that of of a lot of things right and so for me uh during that time I decided to become a midwife I moved on and went to midwifery school in 2013 and now I am a certified professional midwife um I also spent a lot of my time being an orator a facilitator of workshops a lot of the workshops that I, I do have been on the Afro-Latina identity, examining Blackness in the Dominican identity and Latinidad, um, but with the focus of, like, working from the inside out, right? Like, doing the healing work that, is, that like, internalized oppression, um, birth and your birth story, right? And the things that we learn from our lineage, how to alchemize that, Um Learning about my astrology, uh, astrological placements in relation to being a midwife has been instrumental because recognizing where, where exactly my cancer placements were specific in the house has made me understand the charge that I walk with, right? And so a lot of, so my midwifery work is grounded in science and grounded in evidence base, but it has and will always have uh, how do we how do we use this to transform? How do we use these experiences to transform? Um, right now, I'm actually working in midwifery education, so I am responsible for um, educating midwives that will go out in the world, um, and I see myself doing that. I'm of course a jack. Uh, I, I don't want to. I I don't like always saying like jack of all trades, but it feels appropriate because I do a little bit of a lot of things to express my creativity. And I'm the mommy of two of two children, a wonderful Taurus and an Aquarius. Oh, I know. We share that connection of having both a Taurus and Aquarius child. And uh, I know, like, it's great to know that there's a friend out there <laughs> to, <laughs> you know, a support system. You know what it's like. <laughs> Love them, but woo. They are powerhouses, and I'm I, I'm glad to be cultivating them. Absolutely, as well. Um, so yeah, Carmen, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your background. Um, and I know that yeah, even just going back like 15 years ago, like 
your passion was catching babies and of course you're doing so much more um within the birth work realm and um obviously being like an activist and a voice um for birth justice it's it's amazing to see and yeah so i wanted to have you on carmen because i have some questions and i know my audience has some questions too about the moment of birth um obviously you know you and i have been in that space before um you've been on both sides of that space but i know a lot of astrologers have questions about just very practically how is the birth time recorded because a lot of us a lot of us have um experienced birth times that you know sometimes the birth time is rounded sometimes it's rounded to the minute or like like the half hour marker or the hour marker so when we see birth times that are rounded like to the hour for example the astrologer brain in us is kind of like is that the actual birth time or is that a rounded birth time and obviously obviously recording a birth time probably isn't like the top notch priority when a baby is coming earthside unless you're an astrologer but can you tell us a little bit about um that moment of birth and the recording of the birth time like how important is that well for me it's for the utmost importance um up well so i have the privilege and out of as you you that you also have where we know an analog and a digital world and yes. so for the most part i have always been encouraged to wear a, a, a watch with a second hand um and so when i am recording birth time literally there's the person that's that's receiving the baby and then the person that's li literally watching their looking at their watch um so normally so folks get really excited when the head is born but the baby's not born until the entire body is born so there's a time for the head to be born and and we will record head we'll say it head born at that time baby born and then the one baby born that is the birth time the reason being and i'm gonna, I'm gonna like bring you a little bit into midwifery. free the yes. reason why we why we record the birth of the head is because um there's a certain amount of minutes or seconds where a bir uh, the rest of the body not being born is either normal or could be a potential emergency so i have to know as the midwife when the head is born because if it's been like a minute two minutes then i know that there's that I have to maybe do some type of a maneuver to get the rest of the the rest of the body out mm-hmm and the baby doesn't take its first breath earthside usually until the entire until the entire body is born. Um, I've not ever seen in my practice a baby take a breath on the perineum, which is how we would describe it. But now with the advent of using your phone, of using like digital devices, the problem with the problem with that, and also the problem with using any clock, is if you have multiple clocks in the same location. Whose clock are you watching, right? Mm -hmm. So, if, am I? Is it is it based on my watch? Is it the father's watch because he's watching because he wants to, you know, make a phone call? Whomever the support person is. Then, if you're in a hospital, right? Like the hospital clock is not necessarily synced to the iPhone clock. So, usually, there's one person that's designated to give the official time. Okay. Of birth. Um. I've never rounded it up and maybe that's just because I'm a very like stickler for like I know how important the minutes and the seconds are in general yeah. in life and, and because I walk in with like astrology minded right I'm like no what time was it like for example like my my second child she was born at 259 I'm glad that there are people that are meticulous about saying that it was 259 and not three o'clock because that minute can make all the difference, especially if there's some some planet ingressing on, like right above you. Totally. So, so that is how it's recorded, and it's completely subjective. And so the the, um, the issue then is is if the baby's born without anybody present except the the the, the birthing individual and the, their partner. Let's say you were giving birth in in the car, yeah. right? Like that's up to the subject the subjectiveness of two people who are under stress. 
So it doesn't totally. mean it doesn't matter that it doesn't mean that I won't believe, I'm not going to that I disbelieve the person if I wasn't there to witness it. But if you're the person giving birth and the person next to you is not a medical professional who's not thinking about that, then what time was the baby born? It could have been born a few uh, like 20 minutes before the actual time, 20 minutes after. So that's where we get a little bit sketchy. The other, totally. the other piece is that sometimes babies fly out so fast that it gives everybody whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like Catherine, I have seen babies fly out. Like I'm, I wish I was kidding. Like <laughs> I'm envious. I'm envious. <laughs> so in those situations, you just got to be on it. Um. So, it, not now that I'm talking to an astrologer, I think it's 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 a huge responsibility, but it's funny that there are a lot of, a lot of births that is literally subjective to whomever was watching the clock meticulously and who deemed it. But as a midwife, I deem it as the entire, the birth of the entire body. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that because I've run into people who, you know, even in my own family, but clients too, where anytime I get a chart, that has a 29 degree ascendant. So like it's the last degree of the zodiac sign for anyone who's listening and not sure what I mean by that. That means that if they were born maybe four minutes later, the ascendant sign can shift into a new zodiac sign and that would alter my entire delineation of that person's chart. And so for me, I, I want to be correct, you know, when I'm delineating for someone. So anytime I see that or like a zero degree ascendant, I need to like take a few minutes with that person in the beginning and try to suss it out. You know, are you are you a 29 degree Capricorn or are you a zero degrees Aquarius? And and I don't know, because sometimes if it's a rounded birth time, I can sort of justify my needing to do that. But even if it is let's say a time that seems specific enough that it wouldn't be rounded, I still feel like I need to do that because I've encountered that situation where it does change. And um, yeah. I have to say, so funny that you, I pulled up my chart as you're talking because of this, this 29 degrees. So my ascendant is on the 28th degree of Aquarius. And when, for a very long time, I actually thought I was a Pisces rising until I got my official birth chart because I had to handle some business. And it wasn't that I was born at 1010. I was born at 1001 PM. And just that small difference of getting my exact birth time, the way that it was filed in New York state, I was like, wow, I could have lived my whole life thinking that I was a Pisces rising, which as you know, cause you've looked at my chart would have made no sense with the no rest sense. of the with the rest of the signatures, the way that I present in no. the world. And even, you know, I know that this isn't what we're talking about today, but as I've looked at just a really general sense of like some of the stuff I know about my family, it makes perfect sense that I would be born with an Aquarius rising with the amount of Aquarius energy in my family. As an example of how crucial it is that you're not off by that many minutes in my situation where I'm at 28 degrees. Oh, you're totally an Aquarius rising. You're totally an Aquarius rising. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like if I had never met you before and I looked at your chart like that, I might, you know, if it if it was close enough, if your birth time was rounded, I might say, hey, like, let's let's have a chat. Let's have a little investigation. But yeah, even in those situations where I've run into that and the birth time doesn't seem rounded, this question of what defines the moment of birth comes into my questioning. So I had never heard of re recording the head birth time. I'd never heard of that. Yeah, no, we have to literally because of so shoulder dystocia. So basically like what ends up happening is when shoulder dystocia is the head will be born and then it'll, it'll do something that's called turtling. So it will like try to come back in. And that's one of the ways that we know that something's wrong because it does, it should not take more than like a contraction or two for the entire body to be born. Wow. Um, and so that's why the head, and sometimes you'll see if you're looking at a chart, like if baby comes out in one fluid motion, it'll be head, 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 head born, baby born, like literally on the same line. Um, but it's really for, for safety. Um, sometimes when it comes out in one fell swoop, there's no 
there's like a millisecond between the head being born and the and the the, the shoulders and the, the rest of the body being born. Um, sometimes, <laughs> and this will probably blow your mind a little bit. You could you could be born slowly. So like we may not write it in the chart, but we could be watching a baby like you know like crown like crowning. So like mm-hmm. we're recording the fact that we just see the crown, literally yeah. this part of the birth. Then like oh the eyebrows are being born now. If it's a really slow push. Like, yeah. oh, eyes are being born. Like, literally, like, just the entire the entirety of the head being born could be that slow. There's nothing wrong. It's just a really slow emergence. So When you say so, that, I'm like, hmm, is it a Taurus rising? <laughs> like, that's what would be going through in my brain. Because, you know, sometimes if there's, like, a planet on the ascendant, it, it describes what's going on that minute. So a lot of astrologers have noticed that, like, if Mars is rising – that there could be like some speed associated with it, or even sometimes in a, like an emergency or if Saturn is rising, maybe it's moving real slow. So I don't know, it, it might be something interesting to observe. I'm kind of like envious of, I, I just would love to be like a fly on the wall sometime and like observe like birth from like an astrological point of view. <laughs> it seems so cool what you were saying about where the planets are i have not ever really i've never observed that but i'll give you i'll I'll say two things i did and it's the only time i feel that i've ever gotten to see this i did get to witness a birth when it was a blood like a blood red eclipse so yeah no so what ended up oh my god i got chills immediately as i started (laughs) thinking about it so i remember i walk in to i walk in it's you know i'm on i'm on to i'm the first i'm the person that's up to catch and it's it's my client that i have built a relationship with two people are in labor in this in the same at the same time somebody's on the other the other room i'm in this room so um they're like I like so the person that's responsible supervising the both of us is like I'm not sure if I'm gonna be here for these births. So like I'll be in between both rooms. So now we have three midwives, one midwife in another room, I'm in this room, and then the, the senior midwife in between worlds, in between rooms, and this freaking moon is is like doing its thing. Oh my so, goodness. Both of these babies end up having the same exact birth time because they were born exactly at the same time. It was a boy and it was a girl, at least assigned male and female at birth. I remember that, like, I saw the time because I knew what time the eclipse was. I, like, settled everybody, made sure that everybody was stable. I run out to the backyard and I, like, had something on my face because I needed a fresh, a breath, a fresh breath of air. I opened the backyard and I look up and is just eclipsing and I'm oh. like oh my god <laughs> literally wow. like the last little sliver of white was just, and it was that's literally what happened and so wow. I've seen stuff like that I've not I don't, I've not followed anything like that but that I remember happening I was like this I should write about somewhere <laughs> I need to write this down because this will never happen ever again the Please. other Please do. The other piece is that I would be interested now that you mentioned that because I have seen, I have seen babies and 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 the pregnant person work around like emotions or work around the person's emotions to be born. Oftentimes, and at least it is my belief on a metaphysical level that there are there are situations where babies wait for certain certain people yes. or certain moments to come into the world. Yes. Um, we don't give, I'm getting chills again. Um, we don't give <laughs> babies enough agency in this process, but there's this book and then we can go on with the other questions. I know you got a whole bunch of them. There's this book, it's called Immaculate Deception. And in the book, it talks about how babies are active participant in their birth. And the reason why it's so important for babies to go through their birth process is because it's the first activation that they have into the world, right? The first initiation, you can argue, you know, if you're looking at a perfection wheel, that that's very much first house, like I'm coming out, right? Wow. Um, and so many times, like, if we'd only see it as that, like, this is a passive, passive, passenger in this entire journey and that there isn't some type of interaction we're not we're gonna miss the intelligence of how babies act when they're in utero like I've seen 
I've seen situ I've seen situations where like babies are like breech and they won't turn and then ends up in a C section, but it ends up that the baby's cord was too short and that was the only way that that baby was supposed to be born. Wow. Right. No matter how people felt about what they wanted the birth to be. Um I've wow. seen a, I've seen a situation where like the the father of the child wanted to be there, right? But for whatever the reasons were, that baby that baby was coming, whether or not the father was there. It turns out that there was like, you know, some type of like stressful, tense, tense like relationship with yeah. the with the parents where like having the father in the room probably would have prevented that baby from coming because of the energy. Fascinating. Right? And so it so I'm interested now that you're talking about like what was on the ascendant, what were the planets doing that day? Because I have seen family dynamics that that and like relationship dynamics in me like impact the birth. I've seen a situation where like someone was almost past due their date and I'm like, good good God, this person's gonna this person that we're gonna have to send them to the hospital. We want them to have this birth outside the hospital. And I remember this person walks in and they're all dressed to the nines. I'm like, excuse me, where are you going? And I'm in my head like, we got to get this person into labor. I don't know where they're going, but I hope it's to labor. So <laughs> they're dressed up and I'm like, excuse me, you look like you're feeling good today. And they're like, yeah, my husband came back into town. I'm like, okay, I'll see you tonight. Like literally, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> and baby came literally that night. Why? Because for whatever the reasons... That person, that baby needed that man to be in the room. Aww. And so I don't know how much of that the, um, astrology influences these things. And maybe you can enlighten, enlighten us on your show as you develop it. But that, yeah, you just got my mind going around like, what are the, what are the astrological influences that make those decisions where the baby and the, and the mother are making these decisions together? Well, I think you just planted some seeds of, of contemplation and inquiry in my mind, too, because, you know, that's the whole point of the family astrologers to kind of explore these family dynamics, because if there's one thing that kind of shows that there's this meaningful web of connection between family members is, is family astrology. It shows that birth is not random. And that's what and you kind of already started to answer my last major bu bullet point which was babies have their own plan and you always hear that when you're a pregnant person you're going you know like talking about your birth plan and everyone always says well babies have their own plan and so yeah i want i wanted to ask you about that and you've already told us some awesome stories about this but like a, a lot of people sometimes worry oh well my baby not get the correct chart. And I've already started to kind of explore this on here, but like things sort of happen where, like you said, you know, whether a parent can be there or not, the supporting parent can be there or not. Or, um, you know, like if, like I remember when I went into labor with my son, like I, it was already to the point where I knew that I was going to have to have a C-section, but it was so busy in there that no one could get to me and get me on the surgery table for an hour. Like, what are the odds? And I just have to think that there was some kind of higher energy at work to, to get him the birth chart that he was meant to have. Have you seen stuff like that as well? I, I, tr I think and feel that people are born when they're supposed to be born. Um, regardless of like all of the induction pieces, all the induction things that happen, C-section, surgical births, people that are even born prematurely, there's a, I think that there's a cascade of reasons, right? So there's like a biological reason, right? A very like practical anatomical reason about what was going on anatomically with that person. Like I described with like the breech birth. Mm -hmm. Um, then I also then believe, um, in midwifery, we have this thing is called, I think the the four P's or the three P's, I'm going to get it wrong, but it's like powers, which is the power of the body to get the baby out the passenger, which is the baby. Right. And then the, and then the, well, the, the passenger is the baby and then the person itself, I forgot which P that, that describes. So you're looking at three different things that you got to take into consideration, whether the person themselves is clenching, holding this baby in and how does that influence what the baby is doing and whether that baby, like you said, I have a Taurus. I was in labor for four days. <laughs> My that Taurus is... was late. <laughs> she was late. 
it's, my tourists showed up whenever the heck they felt like it pure tourist energy like there's no other way that that baby could have been born so we have to totally. take all those things into account we also like you said not only have to take in um family astrology but also like family dna so like the reason why midwives and OBGYNs ask you well, how was your how what what happened with your parent when they gave birth is because mm-hmm. we see a lot that you birth the way in some way shape or form the way that your parent gave birth to you so like Ooh. my like my parent like my mom gave birth to me and there was like questions about when I was supposed to be due x y and z same thing with my firstborn there were questions about when they were supposed to be due and my mom was in a in labor for a long time I was in labor for a long time my um my sister she gave birth lightning fast my mom gave birth to my sister lightning fast wow. um and then you'll see stuff like people that whose parents had preeclampsia the chances that you might develop preeclampsia if your parents did for whatever the reasons they correlate so um there's that piece the biological piece um and then on a spiritual level for those of us that sh- that follow you know, non-monothe- non-monotheistic points of view and ideologies, we believe that everyone picks their fate and p- picks their destiny, right? And so every every baby, and we know this as mothers, they're, they're going to be born with how we nurture them, but they're, they come into the world with their own agenda, their own, who they've been reincarnated as, what they're supposed to do in the world, and who they're supposed to be with regardless of us. We are just literally like the nurturing vessels that get them here. And so yeah. when we take, when we weave that into our family astrology, um, like offering that you are giving the world, you have to, you have to think about, well, biology is and will probably emerge from the understanding of the of the of the astros. If you look at the planets, right, and you look even at herbalism, there's a connection between astrology and herbs. And every planet has like a like an assignment to the body. How can all of that not be astrological, even if indirectly in that way? Yeah. Wow. What you're saying too about um, like we birthed the way that we were born. It's fascinating because I know you do a lot of work with lineage and I hope to bring you back sometime to talk about lineage as well and like healing through astrology. But uh, that's fascinating how it even shows up there. Um, I can verify that. My mom had all three of us were born with C-sections and I've had two. So I'm just like, you know, word of warning for my daughter if she ever chooses. (laughs) And I think, and I think that um, when you when you give birth, there's a, there's a lot of work that you can do, right, to mm. change change the way that you birth. Yeah. And then there's just something to be said about DNA, right? And then also when you, no matter how much work you do astrologically, metaphysically, therapeutically, nothing will teach you what you need to learn, except that birth. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, like you said, like I tried everything. Like I was going to yoga, I was doing all the things and um, working with a midwife and, you know, all of that. And like, it still was just part of the plan and maybe also my DNA. And I love that you acknowledge that it's, it's both, it's both biology and it's both. um, Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you can also, that's something I have also seen through working with astrology is being able to kind of shift familial patterns. So, I mean, that's a pretty great example of that too, of how like you can, you can shift, but you know, the, it's like the saying goes, the apple only falls so far from the tree. Um, so sometimes we're inching a little bit further away and sometimes we're following in that same current. Um, but yeah, what you were saying before about the blood moon babies, I wanted to circle back to that because we have a name for that in astrology. We call them time twins. So if you if you meet someone who was born um, like on the same day and the same time and in a relatively similar location, that's your time twin. And for an astrologer out there, it's really cool to encounter a time twin and you know you bounce like your life patterns off of one another and it's cool so I kind of hope that those babies 
cross paths later on. They're like, I was born on, under a blood moon. They just like meet at a party and they're like, me too, me too. <laughs> wow, that would be awesome. Have you ever met a time twin, someone with the same rising sign and birthday as you? I mean, that's really how you would define it is like same birthday, same rising. No, I have not. I've met people who who have the same like double double moon and sun with Aquarius rising and I'm like, hmm, how's it going for you? <laughs> yeah, still some strong similarities there for sure. Well, Carmen, this has been amazing. You told us some really cool stories and I feel like I could continue picking your brain for ever, but I know we both have kiddos we got to get back to. Can you tell us, oh, is there anything else you wanted to share with us before we go? Yeah, I don't know if, maybe you see this in astrology, but um, most of the most most of the births that I have seen have been at night. So whenever I see a birth time that's in the afternoon, I start to wonder, like, what is the influence of modern medicine and the world on our fates? Because um usually the reason why births happen in the middle of the night have to do with the interplay of hormones yes right and usually most birth most birth times will be somewhere between the hours of like 10 10 p.m to like seven o'clock in the morning and now with the advent of inductions and you know c-sections and like scheduled c-sections right and we, th you and i talking about this idea that babies choose their own birth time i think that it could be really easy to be hung up on oh my god i'm messing up my baby's chart and not yes. the, and not the fact of like how is the way that we are living in modern times influence the way that we're giving birth and what is and for those of us that are like you know metaphysical um more holistic and more eastern you know polytheistic whatever you want to classify it as how do we this is a question for all of us how do we marry the fact that modern medicine and our dna is being altered at an astounding rate and our and the ability to 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 determine our fate and our destiny right because if you are being induced you you may give you may be more likely to give birth in the afternoon versus if that person had gone into labor early. Now, who's to say we could go down a rabbit hole of like would that person have given would that person have gone into labor anyway on their own? We sure. don't know, right? Because sure. now we're having more people deciding that they want to induce at 39, 40 weeks just because of fear and not because there's anything wrong with the actual baby. So while I believe in fate, I am very much, and maybe this is Pluto and Aquarius questions that we're going to be <laughs> asking ourselves, how much has technology really interfered with our spirituality? What comes first, technology or spirituality, right? Like how, one thing I'll tell you is like, you know, we're talking about like DNA, like we are animals, we're mammals. How many adaptations are we going to go through? And then our, our, the way that we adapt to the world begins to change, right? Like how many C-sections is it going to take for the body to maybe, maybe be unable to like go into labor? Is it mean, does it mean that you something that your mom did something wrong or that you did something wrong? No. What is the, what is the atmosphere and how are we detaching ourselves so much from our astrological, astronomical, worldly like family if you will and 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 like changing our very course as humans um it's something that i often think about as a way to like not make people responsible for what is happening in their birth but that literally the way that we birth is being impacted by what we eat who is responsible for our births how much autonomy we have over our births right it's i, I find it fascinating right totally. like that, that that these things are happening that we're still that there is a spiritual the spiritual interplay happening but then if we're talking um what world religions and like prophecies and like readings and being able to predict and look at like astro astrology in the future what how deeply is humanity going to be affected by by these things totally. because i already i already see it 
Well, yeah, you raised some excellent points of contemplation. Um, and yeah, we've talked about this a little bit within the astrological community. There's a very popular podcast called The Astrology Podcast. And I remember an episode way back when they talked about that, um, when they said that, you know, because whether you're born at, during the daytime or the nighttime has significance in astrology. And so the, the fact that we're having more diurnal births, daytime births, that does have implications for personality. So like if you're a nocturnal person, you're going to be more of a private person, more introspective person. If you're a diurnal person, you may be more plugged in and wanting to be more of the world. I have proposed on a, on a previous um, exploration that I did for the family astrologer that maybe we're seeing more diurnal births because of the way that the world is shifting. You know, like yeah. a lot of people in order to be able to make a living or do what they want to do for a career, you kind of have to put yourself out there a little bit more. And maybe that has a huge thing to do with technology. But what you're saying about how does technology influence our DNA and and how we birth? Because I've thought of that, too, about how, you know, if we were in a different time period, my mother probably wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be here. And so like I wouldn't be passing on that genetic uh, trait of maybe having difficulty with vaginal births. So it's it, very interesting to, to think about. Yeah. Um, and I, I hope that we're able to continue to have these discussions. Um, the reason that I brought up Pluto and Aquarius is because I know that we have, we haven't been alive to see the, to see this happen um in god you know you know how many years because you study this religiously <laughs> but um we haven't seen this and when it comes to science and when it comes to medicine when it even comes to the pandemic that we have that we're living through and how that is that is also impacting and changing dna and changing the way that people give birth like, how are we taking all these things into consideration? And what does the astrology have to say about the modifications that humans are making to them, to their lives, right? Like, you're, you're talking about, like, people that are born during the day being different than people that are being born at night. I also not only think about, I live in New York City, so you got to forgive me for all of these sirens. <laughs> um, I think about, all right, well, what does that mean that we have people that are, that are being born that are more out here but can't do this right mm -hmm. like what does that mean in terms of like the presence of more like and i'm not saying that a, a daytime person can't be this way but based on the information i'm receiving the uh, the appearance of sage sages right the people the, of deep thinkers like what influence is going to have on our music that more people are being born and being born into the world with different traits like i'm curious now because um i'm used to seeing births at night so the babies that I have seen come into the world are going to be still traditionally what we're used to having mm -hmm. more humans who are usually born during these twilight hours. Mm -hmm. um, what is that going to mean if, if we're shifting towards a world, towards a humankind that no longer is being born at night? What does that mean for our intellectual abilities? What does that mean for our education? What shifts can we, what kind of like tensions will we see with those of us that are still being born at night? Versus having more people in the world that are being born at a time that you're actually biologically not actually supposed to be born. Because during the day, like your body, so there's a lot of births that happen on the weekend because your body finally relaxes and Relax. everybody that everybody that's going to be at your birth is usually off from work. Right. Yeah. So how has how has agricultural the agricultural revolution affected the way that we give birth? Right. Now you're giving birth because your body feels safe right yeah so like what you're not giving birth during the day because people aren't usually available and usually still when do you start to relax when does melatonin get get released so now we're messing with people's sleep cycles circadian rhythms it's already affecting our fertility like we i think that this has huge implications so and i would love you know when i want to continue to watch your work to see what are the implications of what's happening astrologically on the planet and how does that influence what kind of humans we're going to see in the next generation come? It's a fascinating question, Carmen. Now I have so much more to like think about and You're stew welcome. on. <laughs> Thank you. See, I'm, I knew I had to have you on as my first guest. Well, we may have to come back and talk a little bit more about 
Pluto and Aquarius and how that could impact like future generations. Um, but yeah, I know that we are getting to our time. So I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing this chat. And can you tell us where can people work with you? So if folks want to work with you or where can they find you? How can, how can we keep up with Carmen? Right now, thesewatersrundeep.com is the best place to find me. I'm going to be having some updates pretty soon um, on that website about how to, how to find me. Um, like you have known me, I have been a very private person for the most part. Um, but that is my public page. People can ask me questions, find if they need to consult or ask me any questions about pregnancy, childbirth. I'm not practicing right now but I can at least direct people and refer them through my network. Awesome. Well, these waters run deep is so such a good like handle, <laughs> especially with what we're talking about. It's so perfect. It's so you. And yeah, so that's where you can find Carmen. These waters run deep. Is that dot com? Dot com. You can also sometimes find a viral tweet. I've seen several viral tweets of Carmen's being shared on additional <laughs> Instagram posts. So, so Carmen, you've got, you've got good content. Uh, would you mind sharing your Twitter handle if anyone wanted to follow you? Uh, my Twitter handle is in Spanish, but it's um, Paltera Negra, which is means black midwife. Um, and you can also just look, look me up and look up Carmen Mojica and I will come up on Twitter as well. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Carmen. And we look forward to having you back sometime. I can't wait. I love this conversation. Thank you, Catherine. My pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. Timing with Transits, my 11-week mentorship and predictive technique begins on September 21st. We're covering transits. We're covering perfections. We've got a blend of live and pre-recorded tutorials and ongoing support throughout the program. So if you want more information on that or you want to snag that early bird rate, head to my website, katherineurban.com.